sloss and Humphreys on the road. Muggins and cream, cream and muggins, straight thugging, living the dream. That, that's our intro. Fucking muggles. Tickling the clit inside your head to make you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> they said it can't be done. I think I've just had the best 24 hours of my life. Oh, from, well, you can start then. From um, from 9pm Friday night to 9pm Saturday night. Yeah, so you messaged... fucking spectacular. You messaged me on Friday because you finally <laughs> finished... Um, oh, wait a minute, I'm not finished. Oh. So, no spoilers. I mean, okay. we wouldn't do spoilers anyway because we're on a podcast and that's rude. Um, the Wheel of Time third book, not Wheel of Time. Not Wheel of Time at all. Children of Time. Children of Time. See the confusion? Mm -hmm. It was actually Children of Memory, which is the third book. Yeah. I could not stop reading that because I thought I was going insane. Like, what the fuck? Of, what kind of journey have I just been on? Like, I was like... <laughs> it, it, the timeline doesn't make sense. He does not hold your hand through any of that the book. The chronology of it, the, the everything, the backstory keeps twisting and changing and you're like, I thought you was met then. How did you come up with that? You how, you come, how did you come into the story in three different ways? Like, am I, did I read that wrong? Am I reading the same page twice? I've already read this bit. Like, is this happening again? Oh, wait a minute, it's slightly different. Yeah. Like, I didn't know who was real, who was alive, who was dead, who, was, who was insane. Am I insane? Like, what a journey. It's, like, a, it's a mind fuck of a book and the, like, the advice I gave to both my parents before they read it is was... just hold on to your insanity it does make sense yeah yeah just be like, <laughs> ple like just stick with it any point that you're like I don't think I understand what's going on that's absolutely fine uh -huh. it took me finishing that book and then like two weeks after of just slowly processing it to go god man I really enjoyed that and the more I think about it and the further I am away from it and, and like the further we are something, the more of it you can see. I'm like, okay, that was really well done. I imagine it's exceptional on a second read. Since yeah. you know what since it's, uh, you, know, you know the, the start. I was, I was so baffled at why they were like intertwining like children's horror stories into it and stuff about witches and all that. Like I was so I was like, this doesn't fit with the world at all. The world that you've created over the span of three books. Mm. This doesn't fit. Yeah. And uh, then uh, like ep epiphany and fucking like eighty percent of the way through the book epiphany and you go, oh fucking genius it's a very you beautifully fucking genius it's a it's a very it has a very beautiful ending to it i'll not say anymore yeah was, I, i'm glad i told you that i hadn't uh, ended it because I'm, I'm like i really loved the way the last two books ended and like if if he if he sticks with that style which like i can't trust him to stick with that style because he's been through several styles throughout the course yeah. of this trilogy yeah. um so I get on this get on this trilogy like hundred percent recommended Adrian Tchaikovsky. Aye, Adrian Tchaikovsky, who is fucking English. Huh? Aye, he writes good English. <laughs> <laughs> but I, mean, I should have guessed. I should have guessed by his words. No, but man, I'm with you. When when his when his, when his name was Adrian Tchaikovsky, mm. I'm like, oh, this is like a Russian, Russian author. Chester. Yeah, a Russian physicist mm. who's just written some fucking. Fan is uh, sci-fi novels. Uh, we can talk about more books after your 24-hour day. Oh, so I text you mm -hmm. saying, like, thank fuck, I've just got, like, a bit of closure on that. Mm -hmm. Because I'm about to dive into some mushrooms, and I didn't want those horrors, those fractious horrors just swimming through my head. Wild mushrooms that you'd picked? No, no, no. I've found... <laughs> I found the golden ticket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's in a chocolate bar, would you believe it? Yeah. Mate, I found... I found these chocolates, this chocolate here that infuses mushrooms into the chocolate. So you get these bars and they're like fucking four. Just for clarification, magic mushrooms. I, uh, I bought a pillow mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> like I didn't want people to think that your New Year's resolution was to just eat fucking rancid food that only Jean would enjoy. <laughs> I, I guarantee when you were like chocolate covered mushrooms while she's listening to the podcast, she was like, ooh. Oh, oh, I, oh, I, just, I bet I bet those wouldn't actually be that bad. You're Get a fucking garlic. freak. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh. Um, so the the four grams of mushrooms in each bar, and on the back of the packet because they're like vacuum sealed. So the, the keep as well. Like you know, I've had some fucking mushrooms in my house. I've talked about this on the podcast with Dean, Amy, and Dan. Where I was like, I don't know. Do mushrooms keep? Can mushrooms get mold? Can mold get mold? Like, is it? And I ended up throwing them out. <laughs> um, these are like vacuum sealed. They'll keep for like well over a year if you want them. But uh, they've got like a little dosage on the back, like two squares is happy go lucky, three squares beginners paradise, four squares like it did, like and then fucking six squares lift off. I was like, oh, you know what? I'll have two squares. The idea was my friend was coming to the hotel, right? My friend was coming to the hotel. I want to try these mushrooms because I want to take them with Natalie. She's never done them before. I want to get the dosage right for her. So I thought I'll go in with like the early dosage. 
very good way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Like I always think it's like you have a responsibility. If you're the, if the, you are the usual drug taker, mm -hmm. it is your responsibility when somebody else asks you to try drugs for the first time to make sure that you give them it in the right capacity. Prospect it. Yeah. Get out and prospect it. So like, well, not even that, like for people, like if people ever go to me, hey, can I try some marijuana? I'm like, have you had a drink? And they're like, yes. And I'm like, then no. Aye. Because... Uh, they're like, but you drink and you smoke weed. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I've been doing this for fucking decades. Your first, your first high is getting cross-faded, which yeah. is an Americanism I'm absolutely keeping, by the way, cross-faded. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah, it's not It's not a good thing. I, I'll only give people weed if if I'm, if it's, I'm like, if you're mm. sober and if it's the right sort of atmosphere. Because I don't want people being like, or you know, people go, I hate marijuana. I'm like, do you hate marijuana or did you hate the people you took marijuana with mm -hmm. and they made you feel really bad? Yeah, yeah. Or was it like you were in a situation? Was it paranoia situational or was it because of the drug? Yes, and also did people not ease you in when you were having your little paranoid thoughts and you, uh -huh. you felt isolated and you were in your own head? And did you people not recognise that and put the arm around your shoulder and tag you through it and coach yeah. you? Yeah, or just fucking put some nice th something nice on television and laugh about things. Mm. like Yeah, yeah, point of focus, uh, play a game, bring remember it back that, in the room. Remember that time little fucking Demi Lardner took way too much weed because she tried to smoke toe-to-toe -to -toe with us <laughs> uh, at the fringe that time. <laughs> and we, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that yeah. it there, your old house? Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. And also, Demi is a tiny She's little tiny, person, yeah. a tiny little person. I don't, we, I don't think we peer pressured her into it. I think she was in a situation where she she felt that she had to like keep pace with us because we were mm. doing it like the the sort of societal uh, not societal fucking peer pressure without being like us making do it, but just the implied pressure of it. So she got too high. And so we just were like, we're going to order pizza and we're going to put on Step Brothers uh -huh. because that's just going to help. Yeah. That's just going to be the best way to do he it. He has a slang it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Ding dong, it's the sound of capitalism. Uh, this podcast is proudly sponsored by and proud to be sponsored by Thistley Cross Cider, the alcohol I drink in my spare time and have done for several years. So much so that I begged them to sponsor this podcast. The fact it's a personal favourite drink of both of us makes it so easy to do this bit. Look, none of the, none looking of the, down the barrel and just uh, lying about a script that you've been forced down your neck. You're like, no, nah, we actually want to be sponsored by this company. Uh, if you watched any of the live streams I did during uh, COVID, you understand that Thistley Cross has always been one of my favourite ciders. It comes in five delicious flavours. They are strawberry, elderflower, original Scottish fruits, and my personal favour, uh, whiskey uh, cask flavoured. I, I, I Which is uh, not just your own personal favourite, but it won the award in 2023 for the best flavoured cider at the Scottish Cider Awards. And um, the UK Cider Awards. Is that right? Actual and uh, if I was one of the judges... Uh, would have absolutely won it. If you go to thistleycrosscider.co.uk and use the promo code thistleysloss10, you'll get a 10% discount code. And by using that code, you will also let them know that our very good influencing has actually worked and then there will be more benefits in the future for both us and you, I and Majon. And at the moment, this is only available in the UK. It's a small Scottish company based in Dunbar and East Lothian. And uh, eventually, hopefully, with our help, it'll get big <laughs> enough to provide uh, cider to all of our listeners all over the world. Yeah, let's make it big in India, lads. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We want all the Estonians drinking Thistley Cross. By going to thistlecrosscider.co.uk. So, like, yeah, like prospecting with it, like, so just you, you just do a bit of discovery with the new, like, if you're going to introduce someone to a drug, you like, I know now that when you come out of it, you get pure munchies. Three o'clock in the morning, the most hungry I've ever been in my life. Really? Um, I got headstopped up by the person that sold us them, and I had meal deals in the fridge just in case, but it turned out I found a kebab shop. Um, had a slight hangover in the morning, not a come down, but a bit of a headache. That might have been because of the booze, because I was drinking alongside it. Mm-hmm. Make sure you've got some paracetamol in the morning or some Nurofen. Just like, like I know exactly like the dosage Natalie needs and what we need in the house for one day. Yeah. So I paid her that respect. I did not pay my friend that respect. <laughs> 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 I used him as a crash test dummy. <laughs> So, all right, Ari Shafir. <laughs> <laughs> it was spectacular because I, I planned this as well. Like I planned. Did you at least tell him it was a mushroom chocolate? I planned this with my wife. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I planned how I was gonna get. I'll not use his name. He's got a job. Mm -hmm. Probably wants to keep it. That's fair. Um, Can we come up with a nickname for him? <laughs> <laughs> Bleep it. 
to use his actual name as his nickname. <laughs> Uh, so he is covering road, right? And I want, I'm wanting to try. This is my chance to try these mushrooms. I don't want to be on mushrooms alone, right? And I want my mate to join us on this trip, right? We can stay in the hotel room if they're a bit too heavy. We can go out and have a drink if if it's manageable. Uh, that's the plan. But uh, he starts running a little bit late. To, we've got to get up at eight o'clock the next morning because we're going to the Derby. We went to Newcastle Sunderland. We'll get up to that. Um, I was like. I'm going to take it before he gets here because if I put it up for discussion, he'll rightly so talk me out of it. Like, well, I haven't got much sleep. I've got to get up in the morning. This fucking, just, you know, a bunch mm-hmm. of things. Yeah. But if, but if he turns up and mm-hmm. I have already took it and the clock is ticking Aye. on my mushroom. He's an arsehole for not, he's an arsehole for making you do it alone. Ah, Aye. yeah, you're not going to leave us behind, are you? Come on. <laughs> I've made this mistake for the both of us. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so he set off. He's like, I've timed it so. I've like, been a bad friend. You'd be a good friend. Let's be in the middle. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll be like one average friend between us. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought if we said like, if I take it like twenty four minutes, twenty four minutes, twenty minutes before he gets there, uh, I'm told that in an hour it kicks in, and then yeah, like he says, if you take it at eight, you'll be up by nine, be down by three. That's what my guy said, right? So I take it twenty minutes, six hours, huh? Yeah. Six good hours. Right. Six wonderful hours. You know, really. like. I'll... So I take it, 20 minutes before he gets here, thinking he's got, I've got a 20-minute head start on him. It's going to be 40 minutes where we're both sent in where we can catch up and we can talk about our days and all that, right? Um, 20 minutes arrives, and fucking my mind have kicked in. <laughs> <laughs> mine have kicked in. And I'm like, and now I'm my ass. And I'm fucking going in the lift, and I'm like, whoa, it's a spaceship. <laughs> Not pressing any buttons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the captain, I, but I couldn't possibly. <laughs> this is my... I'm not like, qualified. <laughs> I don't have my space suit on. I don't have... My, my eyes will come out if we're going to space like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I went down there. Um, ground floor? I don't want to be in the ground. <laughs> oh Can we just have the one just above the ground? Why one elevator's height? <laughs> Uh, I get the I get the lift, and I I, I knew I was gonna like open with this, even if I wasn't on mushrooms. But like, even if I hadn't come up, I knew I was gonna like introduce him in this manner because I discussed it with Natalie. It was measured, calculated. Mm-hmm. Apart from you were gonna fist a chocolate bar into his mouth. <laughs> Psst, get in the lift. <laughs> <laughs> then when the door shut, oh, if I tell you something, will you promise not to laugh? <laughs> Which is always a good way to start. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's already laughing. I'm like, you promised. Uh, I'm on mushrooms. He had no idea I was going to be on mushrooms. He had no idea mushrooms was on the menu, right? And, uh, and he's fucking holding in the lift. And I was like, you promise not that? <laughs> <laughs> and I tapped him through exactly what had happened, how I'm not meant to be up right now. And um, I'm crowbarring him in a day. And he's like, I've never done it before. Oh, good. So, okay, so I, just, didn't, just, I, just, I didn't know that because in my head, you'd done it at a tournament at Kings. But like, he left early. Mm-hmm. So you know, if there's any sleuth out there, you can probably work out who it was by the photographs from the stag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my question for you, sorry, how many did you take? How many bits? Have you, it had the ratio I had, of two, one... I had two squares. Right. And then I give him one. So okay. He had, so he had one square. That's good. And um, so we're sitting doing, he's just took his square. I'm, I've come up, right? And then um, we're talking away and he's telling us about like this, it's had like a little bit of a row with his boss and he's talking to us about his work and like really offloading and just like getting it off his chest and he's talking in a language I don't understand not because of the mushrooms just because there's a bit of jargon to do with his work mm-hmm. like oh there's these leads and they dropped off the system and then somebody else picked them up and like it doesn't really make a great deal of sense to us anyway um, but I, it kicked in fully and I mean fully and then I was like oh this is what that lad meant by in an hour <laughs> He didn't mean the launch bit. Oh, he yeah. meant the bit where you're actually up. And the fucking, I'm, I'm looking at me mate, and he's telling us about his job, and he's like, his face starts contouring like Festival of the Dead, like fucking call that patterns rolling around his face, and the fucking world starts <laughs> folding around him, just like fucking, just squares moving. <laughs> like I'm in a, I'm in a still hotel room, man, dull hotel, like fairly dull hotel room, really, and it was just spectacular. Spectacular. It was otherworldly. And I'm like, I'm going to stop you there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> We're kind of talking about your job yeah, right now. Yeah. Like, just give us a second. I've just leveled up and I need to settle. I need to settle on a level and we can get back to here and we can work. <laughs> I just yeah. started whacking around. Also, have another one, you pussy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then um, when, when he come up, 
when he come up, yeah, we are fucking out the window because we're at the Sandman Hotel. Do you know the one just outside the St James's Park? Oh, like yeah. the view of the stadium, and there's like a couple of other buildings, like in that um, in that kind of vista. And uh, oh my god, it was it was amazing looking into the buildings, like genuinely not being able to tell if the windows were computer screens or windows. Mm. It was like fucking downtown Tokyo. <laughs> it was it was amazing. <laughs> fucking Newcastle. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, downtown Tokyo. I know why you think you thought downtown Tokyo because I know the exact thing you're talking about. You're in Sandman Hotel. St James's Park is there. The fucking statue of what's this cut's right there. And over there is Chinatown. You fucking racist. <laughs> <laughs> right over there, where you were looking at, is fucking Chinatown. Stout Street. With... <laughs> you piece of shit. Downtown Tokyo. I just want, I just want to add here. <laughs> You cannot see Stow Street from the window, what? but it was in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we did walk down there. Fuck me, man, right? We were, you know, the archway going into Stow Street. Mm-hmm. We're like staring up at that and it was just fucking, it was flexing. It was just giving it the beans. <laughs> it is still, this still feature, this archway is just fucking flowing and moving. Because yes. it makes you hyper aware of stuff. You notice stuff more, the colours are brighter and all that, right? He was like, oh, imagine how we look like now, like looking at this. And I was like, they put this here to look at. Mm. This isn't a functional thing, this archway. Like, it's to look at. Like, you're meant to look at that. That's where they in the thing. You're meant to do in, like, people driving by looking at us, going, what they're doing looking at. You're meant to look at that. That's not showing the cars. To be fair, drivers are meant to be looking at the road. Like, you're, meant to, you're meant to look at this. What are you judging me for, for looking at this? <laughs> no one's judging me. I'm just pointing. Damn oh. it. Again. Damn it. I'm going to have to give him a pseudonym. So I told you to give him a fucking nickname. Yeah, Pleb. 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 <laughs> It's rude, but mm. fine. Oh, but it was so funny because we uh, we were um, properly staring at the window for ages because, you know, like, if you step back from the window, you mostly get your own reflection. Mm-hmm. But if you get right up to the window, you can see what's outside. Yeah. When we eventually left the window, <laughs> handprints and face prints. <laughs> <laughs> handprints and face prints all over the window. And I was like, the cleaners are going to think something a lot more exciting happened in yeah, this room yeah. than what actually did. People were recreating the Titanic up here for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Did Pleb have fun? I had the best time. Uh, because there's something I forgot about mushrooms as well, is you know when you start laughing? Good luck stopping laughing. Yeah. Good luck. It's like siphoning, it's like siphoning water. You, know, you give it that suck and then it comes out and it just keeps coming out. It's like... <laughs> spot the Johnny that's took a tank of petrol out of a car before. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, uh, the amount of times we were just fucking howling about some egg. Some was said about a cream egg, man, and fucking I can't even remember like what it was about the cream egg. But on the floor, it's not coming at me. Know, laughing about a cream egg. Well, to be fair, p- uh, pleb is much like Kara in the sense that pleb is one of the best people to tell a story to. Uh huh. Pleb is just a... Uh, receptive. Is fully receptive. Super receptive. You could have a really, really good gig during the French if only Pleb turned up to your show. Mm-hmm. He would make the room feel full. Like I, whenever we've gone on holidays together, whenever I get solo time uh, with Pleb, uh, telling him a story is as good as telling Cara anything. Right? Mm-hmm. Just like laughs at fucking everything, fully immersed, yeah. So I can imagine his sense of humour becoming more erratic. Oh, right, because every, every, like, aside and comment that he puts in a conversation is an absolute fucking curveball. Mm. Like, it's not a direct shot. It's like, <laughs> what the... F- Remember the cream egg thing? Okay. He was looking at some fucking hotties Instagram, some influencers' Instagram, right? And it was like, boobs, and then boobs, and then, like, on a story. And then he's like, cream egg? I don't want to see a cream egg. We had day, but not in that way. <laughs> 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 Funny not on mushrooms, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on mushrooms. I lost my fucking mind at that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I ended up fucking... I ended up with, like, There's this bit of paper, and I was like, is that patterns on that bit of paper? Is it a blank bit of paper? You know, like, this is, like, this is what, like... This is when people who are on mushrooms look like they're on mushrooms. Mm. Staring at a blank bit of paper. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you look like a druggie. Yeah. But what's really happening is... You're a druggie. You're a druggie? <laughs> So you try to spin this any way you want. Hot off. <laughs> <laughs> Two G's, one I, <laughs> and E. We're almost there, boys and girls. <laughs> 
Some of you are going to be like, druggy doesn't end with an IE. I know, but for the purpose of the joke. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so the next day, I live in a pill, and I was like, oh, yeah, we'll make a list. And I take the, the pen off, and I went, drinks, first of all, we need drinks, because we ran out of drinks. This is what was, this is another thing that I had were absolutely howling more than we needed to howl, right? I bought an um, eight pack of, what do you call them, brew dog, where it's like a mixed, like, hazy drains and all that, right? you got to do the, whenever you say brew dog. I had a fucking brew dog, yeah. <laughs> brew dog, right? <laughs> no, no, it's just because the brew, the brew, they're wankers. Mm -hmm. They're the biggest fucking dweebs. <laughs> You see, you see the sorry, you see the Brewdog people have uh, written their own movie about themselves. Brewdog millionaire, ooh, ooh. <laughs> guaranteed better than anything they've written in that fucking script. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, there's two of the um, two of the beers, Elvis Juice, are in cans with red and white stripes. So we finished the other six beers, and then I opened the fridge and went. There's no drinks left. <laughs> Took the red and white stripe on. <laughs> We've got no booze. We're going to have to get out for booze. There's nothing to drink <laughs> in the entire flat. For reference, it's because red and white is the colour of Sunderland. Who that we were playing the very next day. Yes. So I put uh, drinks and cream eggs on this bit of like fast moving paper. Mm -hmm. And then um, we ended up going out and just having a spectacular time. Like fucking Christmas decorations were still up in Newcastle, the lazy bastards, but we stared at them for quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, oh, the hotel corridor had were for a long time. Like both convinced that there was a mirror because you know where when there's a corridor, but then there's the double doors that like will shut on a fire. Mm -hmm. So there's like a frame around the corridor at some point, but then the co corridor just like kind of goes on fire and like kind of bends off into the distance. Both of us convinced that that must be a mirror. That you're not in. That we're not in. <laughs> and it was like... Please, this chocolate's turned me into a vampire. <laughs> this is what's wonderful with, with mushies as well, is sometimes you synchronise your trip. The fact that, like, it wasn't just me seeing a mirror there and we both thought there was a mirror there. And he's like, because I was like, fucking hell, that looked like a mirror. And he's like, wait a minute, is that not a mirror? Like, because he just accepted that it was a mm. mirror. And then I was like, well, you're not in it. He's like, oh, fuck I. <laughs> so we're just in the corridor just looking like druggies. Yeah. <laughs> when really... You were druggies. We're druggies. <laughs> and then I just went, watch, I'll prove it. Ran up and jumped and <laughs> left through this double door. I said, no, it's going to break. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we went out and t town was dead. And when I, when I say it, Yes, because all the fucking Newcastle fans were at home oh, sharpening their knives. Calm before fucking the storm. Putting on nails it. through their fucking bats. Uh, fucking <laughs> making Lucille. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it was dead, but like uh, this this lad who um, who I hung out with after one of the two matches, the semi final last year. This uh, podcast listener, maybe listen to this. Uh, ben, he um, he was saying here's um, here's he James, Lady Grace, Lady Grace is probably going to be busy. It's a safe bet. So me and pleb, me and pleb went looking for Lady Grace. Uh -huh. We couldn't use Google. Uh huh. We try to use That's got nothing to do with drugs, mate. I've seen you. <laughs> I've seen you sober with Google Maps. <laughs> it was like the amount of times I've seen you crack your phone screen by putting a fucking phone down on the ground, standing on top of it, so you can physically see yourself in the map. Stone cold sober. Ooh, a massive. It's like downtown Tokyo. <laughs> Honest to fucking god, the pair were just like. <laughs> <laughs> my phone felt massive it felt like an iPad yeah <laughs> it felt huge and, and and Google Maps was coming out the screen it was like a like you know a pop up book mm -hmm. when you open the book it comes out it was just like it, none of us could look at it for laughing it was like it was freaking out we're like trying to zoom in I, I like I managed to I managed to type in where we're going and then like when they give us the route it was just like nah we couldn't look at it and we're like we're on a quest mm. And we just we just went looking for it, and it took what fucking ages, and we funded. Mm. We were looking at maps, like t chatting to people, just like I know you say this <laughs> with like such a. We eventually fucking found it. This is something we should be proud of. You live in. <laughs> you, you, I know where it is. <laughs> There's nothing. I in know where it is. <laughs> it was so funny because there's one point where I was like, I think it's down there. I think it's towards where Matt used to live. And then this player just went, it's not doing there. I was like, you, you've just heard of this pub now? He was like, 
it's not down there. <laughs> I was like, based on what? He was like, it's not down there. <laughs> then we went another way and it wasn't doing that. <laughs> Pleb knew me well enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just can't. There's no doing there, mate. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Like, I, I know what's down there and it's not that. Um, well, it was eventually funded. It. it was super busy. And um, the lad who asked if, like, where's going to be good in town the night, he just took a punt. That would still be out. Like, he'd finished work and, uh, and come and join with. And uh, I'd already told Pleb about this lad who I met after a gig, like, after not after a gig, after the match, when he went home and I was, like, lying. Because that was the night where I went back to the hotel. I was coked off me nut. Pleb had went back home and uh, just someone from the podcast was like, uh, I'm working at this bar, do you want to come for a pint? And I was like, oh, fuck, I missed this earlier, but like, i still up for it. And he was like, I've finished work now, but I'm having a pint, come and join us. And I went and joined him and had a night out. So this is how I know this lad. And, uh, and so I tell Pleb that story. And then fucking he turned up. Mm. This lad turned up and it was just like, we'd, it was like we'd summoned him. And then he, he joined the party. And by this time we had like loads more stuff on the list. And the list made any sense to this lad. This lad's just joined two people on mushrooms with a fucking list with cream eggs and all kinds of shit. Mm. And, and then he become he kept notes forward. He kept adding stuff to the list. <laughs> we ended up with this like spectacularly massive list. I, I, like he, so he he kept it for memorabilia. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, when we get back to the hotel later on, so like fucking I'll get, like. Alkane's happened on the night, but none of it's really that noteworthy because a lot of it was like, you have to be, like, we're staring at whiles, like, we're look, looking at this wall and all the shadows and the fucking dirt on the walls just, like, moving and flowing and boiling, like, clouds and stuff. And, uh, you know, boiling clouds. Like a time lapse of a cloud, is what I'm saying. But uh, we eventually get back and uh, Pleb grinds for a shower and brushes his teeth and all that. And, uh, and I get the notepad and I put... <laughs> I put cream egg times two in drinks on the notepad and just put it doing ambient. <laughs> and then he comes at the shower and we tidy up and we get ready for the match and all that. And he picks up the list and went, the fuck? I was like, we never left the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Ben's been dead for 20 years. <laughs> Uh, it was so funny as well because we actually like we started trying to like take stuff off the list because we put food on the list and then we're like we needed to get a pen so we put we put pen on the list <laughs> but we need to get the pen to put pen on the list so you take that off straight away and that so we're putting all these things on the list and we're like taking stuff off as we get it food and all that and uh, eventually like cream eggs is the only thing that we haven't got off the list oh it was really funny as well because I just like Ben had the list there's loads of stuff on the list I just saw him like unprompted change the times two to a times three <laughs> Well, I don't want to. I don't want to be the only person with a cream egg. <laughs> I respect that. We were both absolutely fucking howling. I don't think it's actually something the cream egg thing. And honestly, the, like we did have somebody that was uh, like he'd had a drink, but sober in the scheme of things. Uh, we went round. We we're trying to get cream eggs everywhere. You know, this time of year it's pretty hard to get cream eggs. We ended up um, getting some food, part and company, and all that. And then uh, on the way back. Just looked into a shop and there was a like, a f like the freezer was like front and center in the shop, like not even at the back, like luring you in with cream egg ice creams. Does that count? <laughs> we got them, <laughs> two of them, bud. So I need to text Ben, take two of them off the list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for anyone who's going to be doing mushrooms in the future, one of the ways if you ever get too high. The two things that you can uh, uh, eat, drink, slash consume in general to reduce the high is like orange juice and like really fucking thick sugary milkshakes. Like anything, so it mm -hmm. just it, it helps reduce. Yeah. The also, uh, orange juice, anything citric, citric acid. You said milkshakes? <laughs> Did you say milkshakes? That's the second thing. All oh, right, I just said milkshake. Put milkshake on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Unfucking believable. Unfucking. I listened to that entire shit fucking story, and you couldn't listen to two goddamn suggestions oh, out of my god. Oh no, no. I can't now. Fucking do the two things I contributed to that entire story, and you're like, ah, oh, well, fucking half of it. Edit out him saying orange juice. <laughs> 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 Make him look like he's gaslighting <laughs> Edit them into a proper gun. <laughs> like any reality TV show. Uh, that's, a, that's a thing, you know, um, when, you, when you're on hallucinogenics, I, f I find it really good to have a, like a banter anchor to go back to 
to like like that the list was it for us remember mm. in uh, Benidorm it was the price plants yes having a band at Anchor where you're going back and you can add to it and you can like so there's like a running theme like you give the night a theme and it sticks to it uh, it was also like the thing I, I, we've definitely said this on the podcast uh, before one of the great things about football in general is it does not matter how fucked up you are, what mm. cocktail of drugs and booze you are on, what time it is in the morning, how hungover what, you are. What, what day on the session it is. If somebody goes, Man United shit this season, you're like, I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, football chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Football yeah. chat. I mean, I mean, it's a good anchor for just. Yeah, like, uh, that was uh, that was where you know the bit where I told you where I had like fucking stand up because the world was starting to fucking break into kaleidoscopes while I'm being told about his day at work, mm. uh, and I stood up just to like because it, it, like the more I was sat, the more things were starting to stack. But if I move around. Like it, you're, you're flowing, like you're going with the stream rather than letting it fucking smash at you. Mm. Um, instantly, just start talking about football because that's something that you can do quite mindlessly. Yeah. You don't need to put a great deal of thought into just chatting shit about footy. Yeah. Um, and birthdays, you, you can you can just have a football opinion in the moment, and you can just make it up, pull it out of your fucking arse, mad lib the opinion, and say it to a group of football fans. Half of them will be like. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing about football. Every opinion is wrong and every opinion is valid. You can happily disagree with it. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing that, like, running thing throughout it is, like, obviously the derby kept coming up. because we're, like, just unbelievable. We couldn't believe we had tickets. Like, yeah, so explain everybody. to the people who don't care about the little pop derby. Sunderland versus Newcastle is a derby, that, a fixture that's been happening for like well over 100 years. Mm-hmm. Um, two separate cities, like a lot of derbies, like Everton, Liverpool, Glasgow, uh, the Glasgow uh, Celtic Rangers. Celtic Rangers. The old firm. Like, a lot of them are, like, same city derbies and stuff, but this is, like, two separate one-team cities that fight against each other and fucking despise each, each other. other. We're, right. Like, we both think each other are pure scruffs. Mm-hmm. We're both right. <laughs> 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 but they do drink their sister's bath water. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, one of them shagged a seagull, you know? What? One of them shagged a seagull, <laughs> pleaded, pleaded guilty in court. For shagging a seagull? Didn't even put up a fight and caught just went, I shagged it. Surely you fucked its mouth. Huh? So I don't know. See if you can get no, the there's, story. There's no, there's no way that it got fucked up the cloaca. My, I don't even know how you did it. Like, it's got to be the throat. You, got, you, can, you can only throw fuck a seagull. You're not fucking up the cloaca. Do so you think it's a gullet? Gullet fuck? Uh-huh. You would have a little my tiny mac and cock to do that, wouldn't you? There you can. Because like the, and I'm going to say the word again, even though I think I'm getting it wrong, cloaca is the pussy shithole the birds have. No. Like one hole. Oh right, okay. Aye, you're not, you're not fucking a, you're not fucking a bird up that. So when you were saying cloaca, that wasn't just a bit of slang you made up. That was an actual. Um, oh, I'm pretty fucking confident that cloaca. You've taught me out of it, but in a pub quiz, I'm pretty sure I'd be spot on cloaca. So like people had inflatable seagulls and all that, like just shade, shade band on them and a. Uh... Hey, smart boy. Cloaca. Cloaca. I just learned the word COVID. <laughs> is COVID, you know how they call them COVIDs in their uh, children of memory? Yes. Is that like a, a brand of bird? Is that Crow. like a, like crows, Crow. ravens, magpies, that sort of stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Got you. Go on then. He didn't shag the bird, but he did have a wank while holding it between his legs. <laughs> Magnums are different, man. I don't. <laughs> just, just fucking stay there and watch. Fucking <laughs> 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 God knows what the seagulls do. <laughs> that is one of the most fucked up things to just hold it between your knees and make it watch your wag. So, <laughs> but why? There's no rhyme or reason to what Macam's day. They support Sunderland. Why do that? Because they live there. Uh, why? Yeah, the same reason you support Newcastle. I, it's good. Like, you know, when... Well, now they, it's good. They were, they were chanting, uh, Sunderland till I die, we're Sunderland till I die. I'm like, self-slam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's soon. Uh, I'm a dirty pedo. <laughs> I'm a dirty pedo. You're like, all right, sing what you want then. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like it was just f- FYI, this is a man who will regularly uh, tell me off for slamming the English for no fucking reason. Adam Johnson, he gets done for <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, Seagulls just fucking come out in force on about the 60 minute mark, just out of nowhere as if we'd fucking planned it. Mm. As if like, fucking war flags had just, uh, which is the, who do the displays at Newcastle, had just fucking released the seagulls about an hour into the game. It was spectacular. Just seagulls descended on the stadium. We're just thinking, you're getting fucked in the morning. You're getting <laughs> fucked in the morning. And then fucking, anytime any of them swooped towards the Sunderland fans, we'd like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> then fucking one of them got really close, got up, and went down the wall, and then it went quiet after. The word this bloke just went cock tease. <laughs> <laughs> I still cannot. Not only holding a seagull between your legs and masturbating in front of it, like some sort of really like creepy Louis C.K. gull <laughs> sort of situation, <laughs> yeah. but to plead guilty, I Louis C.K. You, <laughs> you could. You could. You would have to hang me, hang me, or give me the fucking chair. I would accept the. I would go to prison before admitting that. Uh, what you do? You, you, I would you, do. You'd be in prison just going, I didn't. I did you not. You fucking did. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking did. <laughs> um, he originally didn't plead guilty. Yeah. Um, but he recorded it. He had his phone out. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell, how many hands has he got? <laughs> so he was on CCTV and he was watching porn on his phone. <laughs> With a seagull between his legs? Uh-huh. So he, he tried to say that he was helping the seagull, but then the CCTV... Helping it what? <laughs> can but we can you know what it is? I think a seagull shot on him. Aye. And like, so I don't so think you. it's equal revenge to put human shit on a seagull, but if you think it would spunk, mm. it's much closer to seagull shit than human shit. Yeah. Like, not not if you zoom in. <laughs> 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 not on a bio, micro, bio, biological level. Yeah. But like just on a... On a in a cartoon as, a, as an aesthetic. Yes. As an aesthetic, spunk and bird shit mm-hmm. is much more similar than bird shit and human shit. Mm-hmm. So I think spunking on the bird is probably adequate revenge for shit on you. I yeah. And that's the only way you can get above a seagull is if you pinch it between your knees. Can we get him on the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> like, is, it, is, like is, is he in jail or can we get him on the podcast? I'm not sure if he's in jail. It doesn't really say. It gives, his full, it gives his full name and the street he lives on. <laughs> right, let's Read it out then. Read it out. Read it out. <laughs> Um, Elliot Steele <laughs> <laughs> His dad's house <laughs> All the articles just say like To be sentenced There's no real follow up Fucking I mean it's worse than punching a horse Aye He got, he got um, Lost his job and everything. You know that He wasn't like Your classic thug The guy that punched the horse He was like A <laughs> white collar worker like, He had a proper job Like a career in that Did he? Aye uh, like, He was a barrister <laughs> <laughs> I think he was just like yeah, I think he's like a court. He lived in the corporate world, yeah. you know. Like he wasn't just like a like chavy guy. And who's were you against when you punched the? This is Sunderland. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. the man, the Derby does something, man. The Derby does something in the office of England. Yeah, uh, it brings out the most feral state and fucking everybody. It's fucking class. It's honestly class. Like that. That like. This is the difference between like an attack the pistol and like. Oh, do you think he thought the seagull was a magpie? <laughs> Do you think that's what it was? <laughs> it's his guilty pleasure. I fucking wish I was a Johnny. <laughs> he he got jailed for twenty four weeks and then banned from keeping animals for ten years. I don't think it was a pet his seagull. Where's his pet seagull? <laughs> they they people don't even keep seagulls as pets. They keep banned from keeping them between your legs. <laughs> Because I, I, like, I've never been to a derby before, not even a home game. You kind of get tickets. It's <laughs> fucking solid to get tickets. Like, everybody wants to go on. And, uh, and that's the first time I've, like, not watched it on telly and actually went. And what a fucking event, man. Mm. It's spectacular. Especially, like, it was also the first one. First one, in, first one in eight years. And the first time we've won since 2011. Wow. And do you know, uh, up until yesterday, we were exactly even. I think the stats are like we won 78 each or something, 78 games each, and then drew drew a bunch. Mm-hmm. So it like completely undecided. And uh, we won yesterday, so probably stop playing them now. That's probably the last one. Done. Yeah, yeah. Is there a bit of you that hopes that, w- would you like to see Sunderland promoted? So that you well, this more is the thing. I've, I've been like hankering for a derby for a few years now mm. and uh, I just couldn't wish them well to get promoted. 
Yeah. In the what two leagues below as well, like see, they need to get they need to go through two periods of joy to have the derby. So I was like, I want the derby. Can't wish them well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's a, it's a it's paradoxical. Yeah, because I know Liverpool. A lot of Liverpool fans so, when Everton were going through a hard time were like, as much as we fucking hate Everton, mm-hmm. we don't want Everton to be relegated. We would much rather just just in a perpetual relegation battle. Yeah, <laughs> just in that perpetual like fucking. Am I gonna get relegated? This sucks. I'm getting beat every game. Yeah, but I think there there, there is a weird. There's a weird honour to that uh-huh. of being like, hey, we fucking hate you and we hate you so much that we want to keep this hate going. But this because is- because of hate and Sunderland, I had one of the best days of my life. Mm-hmm. Like it's it, it is a, a hate that amplifies your life. It's like it, it, do do you finally understand why I hate so many people and things? The uh, joy, this genuine joy that is brought to me when people I hate die. Oh, uh, you is- you would you would love a derby, right? Because. Right next to you, you, you're away fans, right? You're right next to the home fans. Mm. Like it's a roll of the dice whether you're next to the away fans in the home end, you could be at the other end of the stadium, but in the away fans, you're always next to the home fans. You look at them the minute you score. Yeah. You celebrate, you hug your mate, and then the alley is at once going, bah! <laughs> you daft cunts! <laughs> like you're crying. <laughs> it's fucking class, that. Oh, and the what? Fuming. <laughs> <laughs> the super duper fuming, <laughs> a proper fuming. Right. We're railed. We're fucking kicking off. They're trying to fight with and get past the fucking Stuarts. Well, 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 why? The, that was going to be my next question. Like, why are there any fights? They couldn't possibly have been. Do you know how the? Do you know how the? the I mean, the the police, Northumbria police, fucking nailed it, and yeah. uh, and the club nailed it, and like. Getting it so that there's six thousand people in Sunderland without having a single bit of presence on the street, right? You had to get the bus from St James's Park. They put on like near a hundred buses, mm-hmm. right? And everybody had to get that bus. You didn't get a ticket to the game. You got your ticket to the bus, right? And you get on the bus at St James's Park, even if you live next door to the stadium of light. You had to. You had to get to St James's Park to get on the bus. The ship you in. Everybody gets off the bus, goes to the match. That was slick as fuck on the way in. On the way back. Took ages. We're waiting for ages, but Fairfax left the bar open for the best part. Aye. So you could still have a pint after the match while you're waiting, and then they got you outside, and you've got you. They let you go outside with your pint, so you could finish that. But then it was maybe like an hour too long. Mm-hmm. But the, I guess all of the home fans had to like clear the roads. They had to like. I think I think they've done it situationally. If if Sunderland had won, they would have kept the home fans in and getting us the fuck out of there. Yeah. And if we win. They keep us in there, get the home fans away, but that's going to take a lot longer to like clear the, the match day traffic. And then when the match day traffic's gone, you've got room for a hundred buses. But they fucking closed the roads for it. Like they were like the buses are coming. We're going to fucking stop everybody at junctions until all the buses have passed in convoy. And so it was like a smooth journey there and back. And anyone was going to be late on the way there or anything. And the the ship went to town and the, the ship were out at Newcastle and then back into Newcastle without we're having any contact with a single Macam. Well, you didn't have to walk through them. You didn't have to like fucking see them. You didn't have to. So it was uh, aye. There was no, there was no conflict at all. Boo. But then uh, did have to attack a couple of Jollies with a starting shit though. Start and watch it. Um, I didn't even think they'd be at the match. I think they just watched it in Newcastle or in Shiraz Bar. And um, I was just doing in the smoking area with a lad who sorted me tickets out. The lad that works at the club. And um, and somebody started pissing in the beer garden. And as somebody that's pissed in the beer garden before, I'm not going to judge him too heavily, right? But, like, we mate just went, you fucking tramp. There's a toilet there. There's not even a queue. Like, literally just inside the door is a toilet. There's not even a queue. He's like, so fuck me. And I piss where I want now, lad. And he's just, like, fucking a super leg in Chava, Ned. Chava, as we call them. All right. Uh, and then, like, fucking, like, that back and forth happened. And then he fucking shot him with what you're looking at to me mate. And me mate was fucking ready to just date him there and then, yeah. right? And I just turned to his pal. And I went, if they're fighting, we're fighting, we don't want that. <laughs> Get him out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then fucking his pal, fair fuck stuff, he was like, nah, not on Derby Day. <laughs> took, <laughs> took him in. <laughs> no, not on the one time Geordies all get along with each other. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a common enemy. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was really funny. So I was like, oh, no, nah, I don't want to be fighting with my own. Like, with, with your own scum. Yeah, with Aye. my own fans. My own fa- not my own fans, but Newcastle's own fans. Um, but what was classic with that as well um, he was 
look there uh, hanging out with Shola Amiobi. I don't, this doesn't mean a great deal to anybody listening. There's maybe one or two here, but like he played for Newcastle, like under Bobby Robson for like many years. He, he we call him the Macam Slayer because he scored more goals against Sunderland than anybody. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was drinking with as well. So like he was constantly getting um, asked for photos and stuff. But like between photos, he was coming back to us and like well, I was on rounds with him and that and like had a proper chat with him. I think he's going to come to our gig in March. But uh, that was just another like belt. I'd like hanging out with Shola on a like, with it being too much of a fanboy. Yeah. Um, were you were, were you successfully like, not a fanboy? Ah, oh, yeah. I think so. Aye. I think so. Did he t- correct me wrong? Did t- he play at this? Was there any crossover with him playing at the same time as Shearer, or am I imagining that? Yeah, no, he did. I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely did. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely did. Yeah, because I feel, I feel like like I. I like the the two thousands, the early two thousands. Yeah. So I when, I start, score- when I started supporting Chelsea, I'm pretty sure, mm-hmm. like one of the like f- when I decided to support Chelsea at the age of fucking thirteen or fourteen or whatever, I'm pretty sure like one of the first games I watched was Newcastle beating Chelsea two one, and I'm pretty sure Sholo uh, Sholo Amiobi scored the winner in that game. Yeah, did he? And, yeah, and I'm pretty sure it was from a Shearer cross or something like. That. I just remember right, at the yeah. time. I can't confirm or deny, but yeah, they did play alongside right. each other. Okay. Yeah, when when I went down to Cardiff to watch the semi final against Man United, he he scored our consolation goal there. So like, like, like aye, he's he's just like you know he's entertained us over the years, and like I, I think it'll be meant. Like, I love the idea of like if somebody's entertained you, then if you can get them to come to your show and you can entertain them, mm. like I, I like that. Like it's never going to be an exact trade. No, he's <laughs> not screaming joy during your gig. It's never going to be an exact trade, but like I they like the entertaining people who've entertained me. Mm-hmm. Like, so does he still live in uh, Newcastle? Is Jordy. Fuck yeah. yeah. He's a Jordy. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Fucking. I thought he was <laughs> so, Nigerian. He plays for Nigeria. I played, played. Right, Nigeria. okay. But like, fucking born and bred, Jordy. Yeah. Well, then excuse my fucking ignorance. Yeah. Jordy accent. Okay, fucking. Yeah. And he's got a little brother, Sammy. Yeah, yeah. I, that was so <laughs> funny when I texted him. I was like, I don't even know if this name means anything to you, but I'm hanging out with Shirley Amiobi. And you're like, is that Sammy or his brother? <laughs> Like, I was like, that's like you with a Chelsea fan uh, I've been hanging out with Eden Hazard, and I'm like, oh, talking Hazard. <laughs> well, no, no, because I get mad. I absolutely knew who Shola Amiobi was, but it was like that thing where somebody goes, oh, uh, if somebody went, I met uh, Yaya, Yaya Tori, I'd be like, do you have a brother? Golo. Uh, <laughs> like, it would be that sort of thing. Uh, mm-hmm. I like brothers who, or, or, or siblings who are in the same sport. Do you know what's funny? I didn't even know they were brothers. I just thought there was loads of Tories. There's loads of trowries now, you know, like Adama yeah, Traore and Bubakar Traore. Like, I, I don't, like, if you told us they were brothers, I'd be like, oh, really? Oh, oh, now I'm scared I've been racist. Can you find out if... No, uh, it's not racist. Yeah, yeah. It's just two people with the same surname. They probably are. Yeah, yeah, Tori and Kolo Tori are brothers. I'm 99.9% sorry. Yeah, I, I've got, like, I don't know. Okay. Um, are we done with football? I think so, I, yeah. What was the other one? Yeah, yeah, Tori, Kolo Tori. Brothers, brothers. Boom. They're brothers. Oh, they yeah, it's not a racist. No, no, it, well, that's what you meant by brothers. <laughs> 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 Just Google them. Right? Yeah, the black are you not the little black? Who was the brothers? <laughs> Related now. <nah. laughs> they know each other. They're footballers. Of course, they know each other. Um, so Anthony Jeselnik, who I think is consistently uh, in the top ten mm-hmm. at all, uh, uh, yeah. like at all time currently, Prolific. yeah, funny yeah, as fuck. Yeah. Um, he on his podcast uh, had like his top ten. He read like fucking ninety books in a year, right? And oh, he was man. like, "Here's my top ten of the year," and I'm like, "Fuck That's it, okay, insane. I absolutely trust ah. the opinion of that man." So I just went, "Fuck it," downloaded the ten books. I'm like. I'm going to try and read way more this year. I'm going to try and not stay away from f- f- fucking fantasy and Cosby and stuff, but just expand that a little bit. Mm-hmm. And when I get bored of reading new things, can go back to one of those. So I download all the books. And Jesselnik is centre-left politically. Mm-hmm. Not that it fucking matters, but... but I think he's one of the comedians that will definitely have. A, it comes across as right and appeals to the right. Well, a yeah, bit like Jeffries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, which, by the way, I have fucking respect for. I, as I've said countless times, countless times, I think it is your job as a comedian to challenge the people who are on the same political side as you. And I think a truly talented comedian can be funny to both sides. The best type of comic and the comic I aspire to be 
is someone that can make people on both sides of the center of politics fucking laugh. That is a skill. And the people who only perform to the right and only perform to the left are shit and lesser. And I have every single right to look down on them. And I will continue to. Uh, Jess Lick has this fucking right wing base. Now, obviously what's going on in America is you've got two types of right wing people. You've got your center right, your standard Republicans, which I sort of feels like news wise there's less of because like people are just embracing MAGA because the, the Republican politicians are just doing anything to get into power again, mm -hmm. which means giving into an autocrat. Um, so I think one of the books I've read by Anthony that Justin recommended was called Late Americans. It's gay porn. Ah, oh, amazing. Amazing. Like, it's not, don't get me wrong, it's not fully fucking gay porn. Like, it's about... So he's just to, threw a fucking red herring into his... Uh, man, man, don't get me wrong. It is it's a, a good writing. It's a, it's stunningly written, right? So could, could you have actually enjoyed it? Yes, yes. Is he gay? No, no, he's not. Uh, it's beautifully written. It's won awards. It's not just out gay porn, but there is not a single chapter which doesn't describe the taste of cum, the feeling of a cock in an ass, the feeling of a cock mm -hmm. in a mouth, wanking each other off. And you've got no point of reference, so it's all new to you. Man, I just, like, I'm fucking sitting there, like, reading it, and it get... <laughs> <laughs> Licking your lips, can I've been trolled here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm going to be fucking open. Because I like, I kind of liked it at the start because there's one character in it who's in a poetry class and he hates all the poets in it. And I'm like, you're speaking my fucking language. It's the, and, and again, clearly the, the author has a love of poetry and he's trying to paint people who have a taste in poetry as real people, but they're not. They're just fucking losers, right? It's not an art. Uh, and if it is, it's a very low form of one. Um, and, and But it's really getting like the pretentiousness of poets and how fucking shitty what they do is and how utterly inconsequential it is as a medium. Um, and like this guy's insulting it, but he's still... Th so I'm into that. And then he gets his throat fucked. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. That's <laughs> fine. Like I wouldn't... Like sometimes I read fantasy books and like the guy fucks a girl. And like, I'm sure there are gay people out there who read these fantasy novels and they're like, oh. it's like... Uh, straight. Yeah, yeah. It's man, whenever I... Whenever I Whenever me and Craig, hell, swap fucking sex stories, right? Mm -hmm. I have to fucking understand that when I'm talking to him about like eating pussy, eating ass or whatever, he's like, uh, uh. Have the aspect I get, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but girls are an unhairy one, yuckaroo. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm trying to do that. I'm, every single chapter, every single chapter was, again, beautifully written descriptions of cum. <laughs> And like, and I'm just like, Kara's like, you seem to be really enjoying that book because you haven't put it down. I'm like, I'm trying to get through it. <laughs> like I just like I I need I need to read this as fast as possible so that when I'm when I'm next reading this on a plane, on a fucking in a taxi or something, goes, what are you reading? I can go a book about war. <laughs> I'm yeah. reading a book about war. Have you read anything else this year? No, no, no. no. <laughs> first book, first book. I got off to a slow start. Now that being said, Lay Americans as a book. I would give it like three out of five. Like I, I thought the writing was beautiful. That massively increased there when I thought you were going to be out of ten. No, no, three out of five. Three out of five. Man, it was not a bad book. Yeah. It, I don't think it was written for me or my. But do you think he'd done a bit of a Dave Longley and just threw it in, knowing that people would take his recommendation and read it? No, I think Jess on he's, he's certainly he's more read. He's better read than I am. He's 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 definitely more intelligent and, mm. than I am. And like you know, I, I I can always tell when it's like a good book that it feels making me smarter. When every single page I have to uh, like click on the Kindle to find out what the word means. Oh uh, yeah, yeah I have. I've had to do that a lot with children at the time actually. Yeah. So um, Matt, I would if, hey look if you give it give give the late Americans uh, a go. The reason I give it. Three out of five, it's just because it's just one of those books. And again, I think this is down to my intellectual immaturity, which is, and the fact that I mainly read fantasy. See books where fuck all happens. And there's like, there's, it's, 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 it's sort of like this book is like a window into people's lives mm -hmm. talking about, like, it's a very important moment in all their life. They're all students, they're all artists, they're all going through this thing. It's sort of like, you know, it's about late, late stage America and, and yeah. homosexuality in it and, you know, art in it and 
poor people and and the, and sort of like the the dying ends of capitalism and the and the the diminishing middle class and stuff and all this stuff. like i people smarter than me would be able to a really good dissertation on it it was a, it's a, mm. like a good dissertation book yeah uh -huh. but i'm like but I'm, as far as the story goes yeah this, 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 is it the story that was missing oh god it's really hard to say because again like it, it, but I, I i think i didn't get it i think if i were to sit down with people who were poets and artists they would be able to be like it's a commentary on this. Yeah. And I would go, oh, okay. Now I understand. Like, I, I didn't enjoy Catch-22. No. Nah. I felt like it was a 100-page book stretched into a 500-page book repeating the same joke over and over and over. Yeah. I was, I'm not going to read it. I just read the first 100 pages and you're going, all oh, right, I get it. <laughs> yeah, I don't really read, I don't think I read classics that much just no. because the word classic was ruined for me by my father. It was just the classics, what people from the 80s used to describe shit films. Aye. Like, they go, oh, it's a classic. You go, is it black and white? Like, yeah, it's a classic. You go, it's Ooh, a shite. This is, I, I used to be on, on your side with this one until I watched 12 Angry Men. Yeah. And that's fucking mint film. I need to give that another go. Absolutely class film, that. Like, and uh, I heard that they shot that, and um, everything that was on that side of the room, they shot in it once and then everything that on that side of the room they shot at once because they had like set every, every cameras up bigger and shit I don't know mm -hmm. and they had to do it like so every, all the acting is done out of sequence so if like somebody walks across the room and then finishes a line over there that means he'd done that line in one shoot and then done that line in another shoot because mm -hmm. they shot at two different sides but like this is like I think that's the, that's a layer of enjoyment like Rich Masara told us that obviously mm -hmm. and that's like a layer of enjoyment that like really like nerdy film buffs can enjoy about the film as well mm -hmm. but I think like without without put, like stuff like that that's in play of how they shot it the fact that it's all set in one room and it's that gripping yeah and, the, and everybody's mind changes over the course of the film and like one by one, you see the group majority like change into a majority in another way, and the people that are like left left behind from the group majority start getting angry because they're holding on to their beliefs. Like it's such good acting, it's such a good story. Mm. You ever seen Kramer versus Kramer? Years ago, years and years. It's a classic. Ago. You're like, nothing happens. Yeah, really. No. Meryl Streep's a really bad wife and a really bad mum. And you don't like the classic Batman films, do you? Uh, uh. Michael Keaton's Batman is gayer than George Clooney's nipple Batman <laughs> uh, by a country fucking mile. It's stinking hot shit. Uh, stinking hot shit, the old Batman movies. Oh, they suck ass. Uh, oh. Do you not think the bad guys are good? I think DeVito's Penguins class. Like, I don't think, think two is a necessarily good film. And in fact, bad film. Oh. But fucking Penguin, Penguin was a fucking class character. And that, I think I, Penguin and that, but look, people are very aware Nichol, of my Nichols opinions. Nicholson's joke, I was good, but I think he played that, that just joke is better. But shoulders giants. But I think Mark Hamill's Joker is better. I think fucking every Joker I've seen is fucking the only person who did a worse Joker is fucking Jared Leto. <laughs> <laughs> and also, that wasn't even Jared Leto's fault. That was just a really bad fucking script. Like, uh, maybe, maybe oh, that Dan was a fucking great shout for Joker. What? No, not not Dano. Um, Keegan. Barry Keegan. Dunno was the Keoghan. red line. How, how do you pronounce it? Barry Keoghan. Yeah, uh -huh, cuz uh -huh. I, I watched uh, Saltburn the other day. Uh -huh. and, uh, and obviously Banshee's of Venture and his class and that I think he's a fucking going to be a spectacular joker. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I agree. Also like the there's rumors going around on how true they are of like the guy that plays Reacher being Batman, which I think would be the perfect casting because we've never had an accurate Batman. We've had good Batmans, mm -hmm. right? I think Christian Bale's Batman was really good. Yeah. I, th I oh, think... By, by far the best. Uh, yeah, yeah. I love Robin Pattinson's one. It was a different sort of angle. It was more broody and more sort of mm -hmm. emo way. I, I thought his Bruce Wayne was certainly lesser. Christian Bale's Bruce Wayne was really, really good. Um, I thought... Uh, uh, ben, I thought Ben Affleck was really fucking hard done by. Like, he was just in a bunch of shitty, shitty movies because fucking... Uh, uh, what was that director I fucking hate? What's his goddamn fucking name? Justice League, Zack Snyder, worst director of all time. He, Zack Snyder gave Ben Affleck a shitty Batman to mm. do, but Ben Affleck could have been a really good Batman. But again, Batman in the comic books, Bruce Wayne is six foot five and hard as fucking nails. Like he is a brick shithouse. The reason Batman... So the rock, could, the rock could play an accurate Batman? Yes. The reason Batman beats the oh, shithouse Oh, Vin Diesel's people. Batman. 
<laughs> the reason Batman <laughs> beats the fucking I would hate shit. hate that world. Oh, way. yeah. I'd hate a world with Vin Diesel's Batman in it. All right. He was good. At, he, he can be fucking whatever that. What was his one? Fucking. Riddick. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Chronicles of Riddick. Riddick. That was his. Apparently they were all right. Um, Do you know his real name's like something totally bland? Mm -hmm. Like Mark something. Yeah. Mark. Do, do I think his real name was Vin Diesel? No. Yeah, but like. <laughs> So, uh, find out his actual name. I think Mark Small or something like that. Not so, uh, so he's uh, he's in trouble for uh, sexually assaulting one of the people on set of Fast and Furious Five or something. He's got a lawsuit against him, and he's got a court about it. And that, and like Natalie sent us the article. And I was like, oh, really? what's his name? Mark Sinclair. Mark Sinclair. I was like, oh, really? A man called Mark Sinclair who goes by the name Vin Diesel. <laughs> sort of a woman like it's always the ones you least expect yeah I don't know how okay I am with people fucking changing their fucking names to become actors and famous and stuff especially like, to make it like fucking max power it's like oh my yeah man we've discussed that anyone that gives himself a fucking nickname is if mm -hmm. you've ever given yourself a nickname congratulations your nickname is Dweeb mm -hmm. just forever yeah it's uh, it's the most insecure my name's Vin Diesel no it's not it's Dweeby McClose her face now you fucking nerd it's the most insecure lonely thing that's ever happened giving Utterly yourself a cool nickname oh oh like it's so lonely nicknames are decided your friends, by your peers your friends aren't there for you if you've done that uh, you don't have any friends that's, uh, that's what I mean it's that's, lonely you it's don't a lonely have a ass move yeah yeah 100% <laughs> <laughs> um, what time are we on time to go huh no, oh sweet okay I was gonna I was going to bitch about my wife, but... Just do that out of a face when you get in. Well, I do. I don't, you know, anything, anything I complain about my wife, I, like, if, oh, yeah. I always, I've never said anything I just stay passive aggressively on the podcast, really, so she can listen to it. <laughs> yeah, well, I know the guy doesn't listen to this fucking podcast, so, <laughs> so I have to, so I'm not a bastard. So I you've been passive aggressive there now, she's not even <laughs> listening? <laughs> I always make sure that if, I, if I'm ever going to, if I'm ever going to complain about my wife, and also, she's if the you're first being person to hear If you're being passive aggressive talking about other podcasts, just like kind of twist a little lie into it just to make them angry. <laughs> 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 exaggerate something uh, well it's often time I don't know how often make yourself out to be a lot more articulate in the argument that you had that you stood at <laughs> just going I said this precisely and then just like come up with some well I always try to do the thing of like whenever I find whenever I find myself getting annoyed with like little th things that she's doing I'm like right first of all how much of this is hard doing something annoying and how much is it of me having like an expectation of something in my own head mm -hmm. uh, with, and without verbalizing that sort of thing without yeah. saying what I want to happen and then being angry that that isn't me and also what am I doing on the other side what's what does this look like in the mirror world yeah like as much as I'm like oh common example would be like uh, I'm always I'm always first out the door with Kayla. I'm like, we're ready to go. I'm like, oh God, she's always behind. She's not always behind. I've forgotten 30 fucking things. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. If she left when you were ready to leave. We would have nothing. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. I always try my best to be like, right, am I complaining about this thing validly or am I ignorant to a bunch of things that's actually going on and, and I'm also part of the problem? Yeah, and the answer is more often than not, 99% of the time, Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Last night. The 1%. The 1%. <laughs> We're, I'm like, it's a ch uh, we went to a birthday party, you know, one of Kayla's mates had a birthday party, which I thought I would fucking hate. My biggest fear mm -hmm. before I was a dad was that, I, and I said it, I didn't want my, my social circle. Have, that's why I don't have kids. Yeah. If I found out you have to get into loads of kids' birthday parties. I don't want my social circle to be dictated by who my kid makes fucking friends with. Man, I had the time of my life at that birthday party. Yeah, uh, nice guys. Yeah. Man, really good people. Everyone's just in the same fucking boat. Your kids are running around. Because they're all toddlers. So uh -huh. they're just like, they're all just little fucking terrorists. All similar generation as well, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, like, if they if we all lived in the same area, they would all be in the same school. Mm -hmm. In the same fucking class. I mean, you guys. I mean, the, the dads and mams. What do you mean? I use all the same generation now. Is it like a yeah, age, yeah, age yeah, range? Yeah, is there like some? Is there some like young mothers in there? Some we're all like, within. Is some like third child in their forties or whatever? Like is a we're within the same. They're definitely within the same decade mm -hmm. of each other. Um, so we 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 we're having fun there. Kevin had his food. Like I was like, let's get let's just get a fucking Chinese tonight. I can't be honest. Let's just get a fucking Chinese. And um, I'm hungry, which is my fault. I could have I could have snacked at any point. Right, I could have snagged at any point. Or, or devs. We've got food in the house. There's, if I was that hungry, I could have ordered, right. But 
there have been times in the past when I have ordered food for me and kind of come downstairs after put Kayla to bed, be like, I actually would have liked food. And that's me definitely being in the wrong. That was me being impatient. So I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm going to be patient now. And I'm going to order, I'm going to wait for her to come downstairs and get some food. And I message her and I go, hey, I'm ordering Chinese. The only thing you ever eat from a fucking Chinese is chicken satay. So is it safe to order you some chicken satay? She's like, no, no, I'll, I'll come and look at the menu. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be fucking chicken satay. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter what Chinese restaurant we're going to. Uh-huh. You're just going to find chicken satay and order that. And I'm like, what about this one? And she's like, it's 45 minutes away. And I'm like, what with the fuck are you? You're, you're not the driver. <laughs> you're not driving the fucking food here. Uh-huh. It doesn't matter how far away. Are you not thinking it's going to be cold by the time it gets here? Nail on the head there, Kai. Mm-hmm. Right. Again, my impatience of sort of being like, uh, and I'm like, okay, you know what? I hadn't taken that into consideration. And I'm just sitting there and I'm hungry. I'm like, just order. Just say chicken satay. I've all, I, it's already on the menu. I've already placed chicken satay. I'm looking at our full order. I've ordered the five things I want and the one thing I know you want. But I'm just sitting, just looking at all the things. I'm just like, just order. And it's because I'm hungry. And you know how much I hate being dictated by other people's pace. You're a hungry jock. Uh huh. Right. It's just sitting there, sitting there. And again, I'm not subtle when I'm in my, in my fucking terse moods. <laughs> Right, and I'm just saying, I want fucking just, just say, just fucking say chicken satay. <laughs> she goes, what about this place? And I'm like, cool, I'll order the exact fucking same thing on the different menu. Like, these are all places we haven't tried. Fucking didn't want anything, did she? She uh, didn't want anything. 15 food, anything. fucking minutes. 15 f- fucking She's like, actually, am I right? Oh, God, oh. Do you reckon you could have just, like, ordered your food? <laughs> And then just say, like, you decide what you want. And then just, like, you're going to get two knocks at the door. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't such a wonderful thing. No. Look, no it's, it's, it was, it's only 15 minutes, man. It's only 15 it's minutes. It's going to be something in the fridge. Man. I just sell our peanut butter sandwich. It's what I should have done. It's what mm. I should have fucking done. But. <laughs> so you went to complain about your wife then. Just had an epiphany. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had oh, right, right. Okay, okay, maybe she's right 100% of the time. <laughs> No, no, I, like, I think it's one of the times where you're like, okay, it was, it's, it's often, it's so often the time it's, it's just fucking miscommunication and it's just uh, lumping, lumping fault into the other yeah. person's court with zero self-reflection. Oh yeah, just anything like being hungry and tired at the same time as having a disagreement. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just being human. All right, I've got to get back from you, little dog. Bye. It's going to be lonely without us. Love y'all.